Buckle up, tennis fans. The year is far from over. After the champions have been crowned at Roland Garros, stay tuned to Tennis Channel for nonstop action across Europe. That's about as good as it gets. Don't miss star-studded events in Russia, Germany, the Czech Republic, Austria, and France at the Rolex Paris Masters. And to cap it all off, watch the year's top men battle in London at the NITO ATP Finals. It's all live starting Monday on Tennis Channel. Welcome back. If you are in the New York area, you'll be able to see live scores and match highlights through Tennis Channel's partnership with Outfront Media. Subway commuters can enjoy daily recaps and scores around the clock on Outfront's network of digital screens conveniently located on every platform. Back on our DraftKings desk, Steve, John, and Chanda. The last time a player won both singles and doubles here at Roland Garros, it was 20 years ago. It was the Hall of Famer Mary Pierce. But guess what? There's another opportunity. Iga Sviantek still alive in both singles and doubles. She was teaming up with American Nicole Melikar, taking on that all-American duo of Asia Muhammad and Jesse Pagula. Well, Muhammad made the semifinals at the U.S. Open. Pagula playing her first major quarterfinal. Chanda, the best player on the court is still the non-American teenager. Uh, it, well, it is. And in the near court, Pagula there and Muhammad now. It's Svantec at the net on the near court. But she was creating a lot of movement and great angles, held along by her partner, Nicole Melikar, right there. But they've just been a good duo. Played here together for the first time yep. and came through big with Svantec closing it out on her serve. What a great feeling to be still in the tournament in both singles and doubles. Can you believe this, John? Nine matches, singles and doubles. Iga Svantec, 18. 18-0 in sets. I'll give you another one, too. She has played on this big court in singles. No doubles matches have been here right. yet. So when these move to the big court, Iga Sviantek will know the dimensions. Shanna, what do you think? Good move? You're 19 years old. I love playing it. the biggest match of your life. You're okay playing the doubles on the day before? I love it. I mean, yeah. I, I got to the semis of the Australian. I won the doubles that year. I'd have played mixed if I could have. <laughs> and when you're, you're, you're young, you're a teenager, <laughs> you don't have phones. Do it all. Do it all. Good. All right, let's take a look at the men's draw here. They're down to the semifinals. we got Kravitz and Mies still alive to defend their title, John. Yeah, look at this. We have the top seeds. We have the U.S. Open winners, U.S. Open runners-up, and the defending champions. That is a strong men's Final Four, huh, guys? It is extremely strong. But we are not that strong because here on set, we've, we've got these heaters and blankets to keep us warm. Uh, we've <laughs> they're, they're right there. Uh, Giving away the secret, Steve. <laughs> Come on. But with temperatures in the 50s, exactly. we asked the question, is it too cold to play tennis? Rafa Nadal was asked that question, and here's what the 12-time champ had to say. The problem is the weather. It's, it's too cold to play. Honestly, it's, it's very, very cold uh, to play tennis. No, uh, I, I know football players play under these conditions, but it's a little bit different because they are all the time moving. No, we stop, we come back, you know, we stop on the changeovers. You know, it isn't a sport that you, you are stopped a lot of in a lot of moments. No, so uh, it's, that's makes I think it's a little bit dangerous for the for the body play. Speaking of dangerous, they've turned the lights out on us. Yeah. So now <laughs> it's cold and it's very dark. They're basically telling us you don't have to go home. <laughs> you got to get out of here. It's closing time, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. All right, so Rafa thinks it's too cold, John. I mean, Ted was saying earlier in baseball, they play in much colder temperatures. They're not moving around. In American football, you play in snow. But you're not always moving around. What do you think? Let us not forget. Rafa's provenance from Mallorca, not exactly, uh, you know, not, not exactly Green Bay in, in December. I, you know, I think, look, we knew this coming into this event. This was going to be different than French Opens. Here we are on the French Alps with a skier. Oh, no, wait, that's a Williams sister. That's Venus going to her first match. There's Petra with uh, parka time. If uh, some of these clothing sponsors had wanted to show off their winter wear, this would have been the event to do it. This is Vika Azarenka coming in from the ice skating rink. <laughs> Um, no, look, it's October, it's fall, it's different conditions, but I don't know if it's too cold to play matches. What do you think? I mean, I understand his point. It's different. Players are not used to playing in these temperatures at this time of year. Tournaments would be indoors. The Roland Garros would have been played in, during the summer. And in tennis, we sort of follow summer everywhere. You know, we go to Australia at summertime, and, and players just get used to that. Certainly, you have to be more careful in these conditions. And for Rafa who knows this place so well, 
I could see why he'd say that. I mean, I'm cold up here, even with eaters. <laughs> Yelena Djokovic is the. I mean, look at that. I, the need one of those. I, I love it. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how players are feeling. Like bundling up, it is really. It's been one of the things they've had to deal with the most. Don't you get warm though once you're out on court? You do, Steve, but not if it's 40 or yeah, 50 degrees. I was going to say, 49 degrees is 49 degrees, yeah, whether you're running that's... around or not. But I, do you guys say, I think this speaks well of tennis in, in a way. I mean, we talk about some of these matches in Australia where it's 118 degrees and we have to hydrate. These are real athletes. They adjust to conditions. In a way, I, I kind of like this look. And, you know, no, no one cares. But wear, wear a pair of tights, you know, dress for the occasion, wear layers. But uh, I, I don't mind this. I don't think this has caused a great sort of decline in the quality of tennis being played. I don't think it has either, and that's kind of the, the, as you say, the good part about how players have adjusted during these times. I think everybody's just, you know, you figure out, okay, am I going to wear different clothing? I'm going to, you know, change that aspect. You have to figure out what you're comfortable playing in. We had the can talk about maybe playing in gloves earlier. <laughs> yes. That doesn't work. Uh, but, you know, every player has had to figure out what works best for them in these different conditions, and that's as important as adjusting anything, you know, between the lines. Exactly. Not a lot of cramping. That's the one thing we're missing is gloves.